I've always looked at this journey in terms of being a female artist, a black artist, as a marathon. This is not a sprint. This is a lifetime. And one of the things I've always uh, felt, and I'll say again, is that if you're an artist, no matter what your gender, what your color is, you're an artist and you create much of the time when no one is looking. You do it because it's a love, it's a passion. It's not a hobby, <laughs> it's what you breathe. You just keep doing it. And yeah, it's been difficult, but you move through it because you're standing on the shoulders of other people before you that did the same thing. My name is Janet Taylor Pickett. I'm an artist, um, educator, painter. I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was born in 1948. Um, so that would be 50s. You know, I grew up in the 50s. It was grand. I had parents who really supported the fact that at that particular time we were called colored. So this little colored girl who was always drawing and making things was going to grow up to be an artist. My grandparents came up through the Great Migration from Brownsville, Tennessee, up to Ypsilanti in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My mother was born there, my father was born in Tennessee. So growing up in the Midwest, I mean, we had gardens and um, orchards, like five apple trees, a peach tree, a pear tree, and all of that. So I was surrounded by wonderful, a wonderful family that kind of sequestered me and protected me from the segregation that was kind of all around us. Um, I grew up where we knew where black people could go and where black people couldn't go. But in that growing up came the civil rights movement. Uh, I certainly had wonderful women in my childhood, my mother, my grandparents, um, contemporary women, artists. Um, I have a wonderful daughter, she inspires me. <laughs> Um, artists, Lois Maylou Jones, Alma Thomas, Betty Saar, Alice Neal, Frida Kahlo, Toni Morrison as a writer, Alice Walker. You know, these have been influences, influencers uh, in terms of artists and so forth. I remember seeing a book on Henri Matisse when I was younger and at that particular time I didn't quite know who he was as an artist until I started taking art history and that kind of thing and I just bonded to his colors and and the kind of I don't know visual innocence but as I got older I understood that it wasn't a visual innocence it was a very sophisticated way of looking at the world and being able to distill it um, to form and shape and color and emotion. He painted things that surrounded him in daily life and that's what has inspired me as an artist. Bearden is, um, of course he was inspired by Matisse also, but I just love how he told his story as um, African-American artist and um, how he talked about his biography, but also um, honing in and using the history of art as his inspiration in terms of his collage and how he was able to distill and simplify through paper as well as paint, but create this layered, remarkable story of his visual um, dialogue know his the geography of his imagination and his response one of the most challenging uh, parts of being a woman in the creative field in terms of the visual arts is being seen and it's even more difficult at times being an african-american female uh, painter artist creator because it seems like the larger s society in terms of its white supremacy, only allows, allows a few to get through. I think, and this is just my opinion, but I think there should be some kind of intention behind the art that you create. At least for me it is. There should be a reason, a raison d'etre behind your work. 
a reason for creating it. Um, a voice. I think you should have a strong voice, whether it's abstract, whether it's representational, but have a belief in what you do. And sometimes the voice can be subtle, sometimes it can be loud, but if it's if there's a strong intention behind it, that you're going to be able to manifest some kind of change. I believe, for me, there has to be a spiritual connection behind what I do. Um, I do believe in a higher power, um, and there's a word, inspiration, it comes from the Greek, spiritus. The spirit speaks through you. And for me, I think for many artists, it has to speak through you into you. And I do believe, as I've gotten older, that that age shouldn't be a factor in creativity. It really shouldn't. Um, I'm finding when I was younger, I looked at the world in one way. And in each generation, in each iteration of my creativity, um, I've changed my view of the world. And I just think that part of it is loving what you do and having fun. It doesn't get any easier. It really doesn't because when you're creating art on a particular level, that creativity evolves and so do you. So I think one of the things is just to stay healthy, stay fresh, um, have a vision, have a joy, and have a spiritual connection with the world around you. Be bewildered in, in wonderment of the world. And no matter what you choose to do, do it with spirit and do it with love and do it with kindness. I may be a late bloomer, but I'm blooming. <laughs> and will continue to.